Hey everyone, Joe here with the Audio Prepper channel and in today's video I have put together a pack out that is comprised of some of my newest, most extreme camping survival gear that I own to date. We're going to be loading it all up onto my ATV and sled and heading out to a location in the Northwest Idaho mountains to set up camp and test it all out. Then we're going to be camping, trapping small game, exploring the area, building campfires, eating good food, and staying the night in the ultimate bug out base camp. Stay tuned, this will be a good one. All right, so we're here. As you can see, there is already a bit of a campsite already developed. So this is some land that I own. Uh, I, I do come out here periodically to camp with the family, you know, test out survival gear and build shelters like the one you see here. So it's been a while since I've been out here. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead, get things cleaned up. I'm gonna kind of reconstruct this campfire ring and our shelter back here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and unload our sled and get the rest of the camp set up. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is get our tent set up, but I gotta get all this gear off of here first. Okay, so this is my newest piece of gear. This is a 10 by 10 by six foot canvas bell tent by a company called Waldzimmer. Uh, I picked it up on Amazon about two weeks ago uh, for a really good deal. I'll make sure to leave links in the description, but uh, I've never set it up, so I'm excited to uh, get this all set up and see what it looks like. All right, that was super simple. Okay, so for those of you who might not be familiar with these little gadgets here, uh, these are like really great little feet, little things that they put on the ends of tents. I'm not sure what the names are, but uh, basically what you do is when you pull out your guy line like this, you basically want to pull the line out through this little gadget here so that you have a loop and then you bring it out until your tent is taut. And then you put your stake in the ground at an angle like this, so that it's going away from your tent. Hammer it down, and then you take the little gadget here and you just kind of straighten it out like that. And then you can cinch this guideline really tight and then you're done and it just kind of spreads back out cinches it and keeps it in place and keeps your uh your rope here and your tent here nice and taut all right so our tent is all set up so that was actually pretty easy uh wasn't complicated at all 
a little labor intensive getting all the stakes in the ground, but it went up pretty quick. So I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of the gear uh, put inside the tent and get it all set up. And then we'll go inside and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so the first thing I'm going to set up is my Cabela's Army Cot. All right, so the sleeping mat we're going to be sleeping on tonight is by Thermarest, and it is their luxury series. So I'm going to be really comfy tonight. All right, so the sleeping bag is by Browning. It is a minus 20 sleeping bag. So, uh, yeah, I'm not worried about getting cold tonight. All right, let's get the stove set up. All right, so one of the things that I brought along with me is this small foldable step stool. So I actually picked this up at Walmart for about $12. It was really cheap, but I was shopping online for like tent tables and they, the price points on those were just outrageous. They were like 40 bucks for a little table. And most of them were a little too high in terms of where I wanted them for my cot. So I found this and I think it's gonna work out great. So it's just gonna kind of act as like a nightstand next to my cot here and I'm gonna go ahead and place my solar generator right on top of there like that and then that way I can charge my phone right here charge flashlights or you know pretty much have my power for the rest of the weekend right here I told you this was gonna be luxury All right, so our fire reflector wall is all done. And I'm just gonna let you know the uh, bank line that I'm using. This is number 36 bank line, and it is made by Sergeant Knott. So it's a tarred bank line, just a really good heavy duty quarter pound bank line. All right, so as you can see, it's still a little light outside, but I'm gonna go ahead and get the fire going in my wood stove now, just so if there's any issues with it, I wanna make sure to work them out now while it's still light outside and not when it's dark and cold. So the fire tinder that I'm going to be using to get this fire started 
is this Sawtooth Tinder by DEFCON 1 Survival. Uh, I'll make sure to leave a link in the description, but this is a fire tinder that I make myself. So if you're interested in some really good fire tinder and you want to support the channel, this is a great way to do it. So make sure to get yourself some Sawtooth Tinder by DEFCON 1 Survival. All right, so as you can see, uh, the fire tinder is kind of like a fibrous paste. So the idea and the reason why I formulated it this way is because I wanted to create a fire tinder that you could kind of like dig out with your knife or like a stick and uh, basically just get the amount you want. But as you can see, that's just kind of like really fibrous fire tinder. I don't know if the uh, camera is picking that up. Uh, I kind of designed it that way for the purpose of, you know, basically digging it out with your knife or with a stick and keeping it on the end of a stick like that. And it just, see how it just sticks like that? And then that way I can get it ignited on here and then feed it into my fire once I have it set up. Uh, instead of just having like a big clunky, you know, piece of fire starter and you're trying to feed it into your fire with your hands, this way it just gives you the ability to put it on a stick and you know, really precisely feed it into exactly where you want the fire to start. As you can see, it just starts right up. So I'll just show you inside how I got it all set up. So I, this is definitely luxury camping here, but I got the stove going and it is getting really warm in here right now. So the temperature is starting to drop here quite precipitously uh, and it's getting really windy. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my GMRS radio here and check the weather. 45 at Bowman and 50 in Grangeville. Elsewhere, it was cloudy. It was 47 at Missoula and 44 at Seattle. At Wenatchee, the wind was northwest gusting to 33 at Ellensburg. All right, well, I'm going to head out and uh, do some exploring and I'll probably set up some snares tonight. So I have some small game survival snares uh these are by defcon one survival which is a company that i own and again this is uh, another product that i hand make myself so if you want to get some of these snares and uh, support the channel this is a great way to do it so these are awesome snares and it's one of those items that i don't see in a lot of people's bug out bags and to me these are critical. A lot of times people will put just some cordage or some wire in their bug out bags uh, with the anticipation that they're going to make some snares. But in my opinion, it makes a lot more sense to just have the snares pre-made. And, you know, if you ever watch that show alone, snaring their food is pretty much their primary source of procuring their food. So a uh, very critical thing to have in your bug out bag. So I'll make sure to leave a link in the description to where you can get some of these small game snares. Looks like uh, tough to hair from some deer. All right, so as you can see, we got a perfect small little game trail going on right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the snare to this tree stump right here. All right, so each case of snares contains five snares. So, right, so I'm gonna go ahead and attach our first snare to this tree here. So I'm just gonna run it through the end of our snare loop here, just like so. So there it's attached. All right, I'm gonna take this stick here and carve the end 
so that I can set the snare exactly where I want it by putting this little plastic tube right here, right in there like that. And then I can basically stick this in the ground over here like that. And that way it just, it allows us to position the snare exactly where we want it. All right, so I gotta put this other stick right here and then that way it'll just kind of keep them from going any other direction other than right where we want them to go. And our first snare is set. All right, well, it is getting dark out and I am hungry. So I'm gonna get this fire going and get some dinner on. All right, so on the menu for tonight, we have fajitas. So I got some chicken marinating right here, and then I have some pre-cut veggies. I got some red peppers, green peppers, and some red onion. And then as a treat, Miss Idaho Prepper made her famous sourdough bread. So I'm gonna be frying some of this up tonight too. So I'm gonna be eating good tonight. All right, so our fajitas are doing really well. So I'm gonna go ahead and start cooking up some of this bread. All right, well, our fajitas are about done. Our bread's looking good. So I'm gonna go ahead and get our chicken and veggies on here. Transfer it on over to my plate like that. That looks good enough to eat. All right, so you guys know I'm a hot sauce guy. So tonight we're going to be trying this Melinda's Ghost Pepper hot sauce. I have a feeling I'm going to probably regret this. All right, let's see how this tastes. I immediately regret this decision. Mm. The bread is so good. It turned out really well. The vegetables and the chicken cooked really evenly. And uh, the bread's really good. The hot sauce is hot. It's good. All right, guys. Well, it's getting pretty cold out, so I'm going to go ahead, get in the tent, and call it a night. Oh, wow. It is warm in here. I think it's about 80 degrees in here. There's about a 50 degree difference from in here and out there. That is crazy. Yeah, this wood stove is uh, really kicking butt. All right, guys, so before I go to bed, I just wanted to go ahead and show you my solar generator here. So this is the E600 
LFP by Tecron, and it was sent to me by the company. And I've been meaning to do a review on it, but I just haven't had an opportunity to get it out into the field and test it. So, um, you know, I try to make it a habit of not really promoting anything until I've, you know, thoroughly tested it out. So I can definitely say so far, this has been working out good. It still has a full charge. I probably charged my cell phone with it twice already since I've been, since I've been out here. Uh, but it has the 320 volt AC outlets here. It's got a uh, 12 volt DC output uh, right here. And then it's got plenty of USB ports and things like that for charging your phone. So uh, I don't have the solar panels that to go along with it, but if I did, I could be out, you know, I can stay out here probably indefinitely as far as just keeping my electronics charged, but uh, it does have 614 watt hours. So it's plenty of juice. I, you know, I charge this before I take out and uh, take off into the field and, um, you know, it, it will keep me juiced up for, you know, at least two weeks just on the charge that's on here. So a unit like this is only about 20 pounds. So not too bad. You throw it in your trailer or, you know, in your sled. And, uh, it's just, I think in my opinion, it's a good thing to have when you're out camping. It just kind of takes you that next level of comfort just knowing you have the ability to like keep your flashlights charged and your phone charged and uh your radios and things like that so uh, i'll make sure to leave a link in the description where you can pick one of these up along with a discount code but um they're a really good deal i think you can get a unit like this for you know just a little over 300 dollars. so not bad for a solar generator all right you guys well I am beat. Uh, I'm not even going to bother, you know, restoking the fire because I'm, I'm more than warm enough. It's not even really that cold outside. And this sleeping bag is uh, more than warm enough. So I'm just going to uh, shut the lights off and go to sleep. And I will see you guys in the morning. <laughs> I slept really well last night believe it or not we actually started getting rain I kind of woke up and heard the rain on the tent and then it started to kind of dawn on me I wasn't sure if this had been waterproofed or not I don't know so hopefully I'm kind of tempted to see what it looks like outside hopefully the water's beating off of it but uh, it's a little damp on the inside here but you know nothing nothing too bad it's not like the water penetrated and came in but we did get a little bit of water through the uh the uh pipe vent over there for the wood stove so but it's not too bad so yeah i slept pretty good last night i did not bring a pillow unfortunately but i had this fleece so it was a good substitute but i'm gonna get up get dressed and uh make some coffee so because it rained last night, I already know that the firewood outside uh, is soaking wet and it's going to be pretty much impossible to get a fire going. And it's just too much trouble just to boil a cup of water. So I'm going to be heating up my cup of coffee on this Espit stove. It's about ready. I'm going to go ahead and add my hot chocolate. Unfortunately, I forgot to bring coffee, but it's no big deal. Hot chocolate's a uh, close second. That hits the spot. 
All right, you guys, well, that's gonna do it for me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, my family's actually gonna come out here and spend the rest of the weekend with me, so I'm looking forward to that. But uh, we just had a uh, storm advisory come in, and so we're supposed to be getting some pretty heavy rain tonight. So I'm a little concerned about the tent not being waterproofed, so I might head into town and pick up some waterproofing product and get this waterproof before the rains uh, come in. So um, if again, if you have any questions for me, go ahead and leave it in the comment section. And if you haven't done so already, please make sure to thumbs up this video and subscribe to my channel. And if you're interested in any of the products that you saw in today's video, I'll make sure to leave links in the description, uh, as well as the fire tinder uh, that I have. If you want to support the channel, that's a great way to do it, as well as with the snares. So I'll make sure to leave links in the description for those products as well. Uh, so with that said, until the next time, stay prepared.